Welcome back to Harbor Unbox. Today we are checking out what might be the best GeForce RTX 2060 graphics card available right now. Certainly one of the biggest and it's also one of the most expensive. Of course the RTX 2060 MSRP is $350 US. This thing is $50 more and at the $350 price there are a few basic models available but nothing quite like this. Having said all that, we typically recommend that you stick to the MSRP, at least when possible. But if you're keeping the graphics card for, I don't know, two to three years, is spending the extra $50 a big deal? Or more to the point, is it worth it? At least in this case, you can clearly see where the extra money is going. Whereas the $350 models are little dual and single fan cards, this beast has three. But really, it is more than that. Now this RTX 2060, it really has a high-end cooler. It's a two and a half slot design, so it takes up three slots, but this means it does offer 40% more fin density than the dual slot versions. You could easily mistake this thing for an RTX 2080 Ti. It's long, it's tall, and it's thick. Oh, and it's also really heavy, tipping the scales at 1,307 grams. The advantage to all this though, apart from looking completely badass in your system, is that it should run very cool, quiet, and with a bit of luck, overclock like a champ. For those of you wondering, the card measures 300 millimeters long, stands 132 millimeters tall, and it is a whopping 50 millimeters wide. The PCB stretches the entire length and height of the cooler, and on the rear side is wrapped in a heat spreader, or I suppose in this case, a backplate, as it doesn't actually come in contact with a PCB using any thermal pads, so just a traditional backplate then. It does have a fancy RGB backlit ROG logo though, so that's pretty neat. On the front side, the black and gray fan shroud features the typical ROG Strix design and you get three 85mm wing blade fans which are IP5X certified, meaning they are dust resistant. Whipping off the cooler by removing just six screws reveals the underside and here we find two massive aluminium fin arrays with base plates for cooling the GPU and VRM. The nickel plated GPU base plate is quite thick and there are half a dozen six millimeter thick copper heat pipes that transfer heat away from the GPU. Then the second rectangular plate is used to extract heat from the VRM, in this case the 10 power stages. This plate features a thermal pad to make contact with the components, but there is a bit of an issue here. It doesn't cover the entire power stage. And even worse, the pad on my card wasn't actually installed correctly. Half the power stages had less than 50% of their surface covered. This will no doubt cause these components to get much hotter than they need to. I don't suspect this will cause too many issues for an RTX 2060, but it could be a real issue for a higher end graphics card. And ASUS has made this mistake in the past. Their Vega 56 and 64 cards suffered from VRM throttling due to poor quality control on the thermal pads. It's a shame because this cooler really is a work of art. It's just been let down by poorly installed thermal pads. As for the GDDR6 memory, that's cooled via a large heat spreader. Actually, the heat spreader pulls double duty, as it's not just used to cool the memory, but also strengthen the PCB. In total, it adds 155 grams to the card's weight, and its large surface area makes it very good for cooling the GDDR6 memory. Again, the heat spreader doesn't seem to fully cover the GDDR6 memory chips, so I'm not sure how much of an impact that's going to have on operating temperatures, but we will find out shortly. As for the PCB, well, for an RTX 2060, this thing is massive, so there's plenty of spare room. The only noteworthy additions here is an additional 6-pin power input. Most models only feature a single 8-pin power connector, but this ASUS model gets an 8-pin plus a 6-pin. There's also a dual BIOS switch that allows the fan profile to be adjusted from the performance mode to a quiet mode. For my testing, I use the performance mode, which is still exceptionally quiet, but the quiet mode does stop the fans from spinning entirely when the GPU drops below 55 degrees. Using the performance mode, the fans are always spinning, but again, the operating volume is very low. Then around at the I.O. panel, there's two display ports and two HDMI ports. Most RTX 2060 cards only feature a single HDMI with three display ports, so this is a slightly different configuration from ASUS. Anyway, enough going over the card, I think it's time to test it out. As usual with our graphics card reviews, the focus is on operating temperatures, volume, power consumption, and overclocking. I will touch a little bit on out-of-the-box performance, but only in a few games. There's really no need to benchmark our entire games library. First off, I wanted to see how hot the Strix model gets out of the box. 
So as I often do, I fired up F1 2018 and ran that thing on a loop for an hour. With an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees maintained throughout the testing, the card maxed out at just 62 degrees, and that's 11 degrees cooler than the MSI Gaming Z model reviewed a few days ago. And then using the silent mode, it only went as high as 66 degrees, and still 7 degrees cooler than the MSI Gaming Z. The temperature's all the more impressive given how quiet the card ran. My room has a noise floor of 38 dBA, at least with the meter that I use, and the Strix was recorded at 39 dBA. So I estimated that it's probably just 2 to 3 dBA louder than the MSI card, and that is with the performance mode. Admittedly though, I don't have the best setup for accurately measuring these quieter graphics cards. That's something we will improve over time, but Personally, I couldn't tell the difference between gaming with either the MSI or ASUS models. They're both very quiet. You'll also notice in the F1 2018 footage that the core held steady at 1980 MHz, and that was the typical operating frequency seen across numerous titles. It was also 30 MHz higher than the MSI card. So not a massive difference I know, but it still maintained a higher core clock speed while running significantly cooler. As for the GDDR6 memory, I measured a peak surface temperature of just 64 degrees using K-type thermocouples, while the VRM power stages peaked at only 54 degrees. Putting those figures in context, the MSI Gaming Z hit 71 degrees for the GDDR6 memory, so it was 7 degrees warmer, while the VRM hit 81 degrees, making it 27 degrees hotter. MSI uses a tiny little heat spreader over the VRM on the Gaming Z, whereas ASUS used the main cooler. I was very concerned about the shoddy thermal pad placement on the ASUS card, but didn't seem to be a problem. And just to be clear, I measured the VRM temperature across a number of power stages, but the peak was recorded on the middle stages, which had the least amount of contact with the thermal pad. Anyway, these temperatures are exceptionally good. Moving on to some gaming benchmarks, we see when playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider that the Strix model is 1-2 FPS faster than MSI's Gaming Z. Not earth-shattering gains, but it was faster, and oddly this is enough to put it on par with the base model RTX 2070 in this title. And man, I don't feel bad about giving the RTX 2070 a negative review. They turned out to be an even bigger ripoff than I was expecting. Moving on, we see the same thing in Strange Brigade. We're really looking at the margin of error here, though it is clear that these AIB models are a little faster than Nvidia's Founders Edition. The ASUS Strix model was again 1 to 2 FPS faster than MSI's Gaming Z, though this time the RTX 2070 was at least faster by a decent margin. Finally, we have Forza Horizon 4, and again, just a few frames in it, though this is another title where the ASUS Strix RTX 2060 was basically matching a base model RTX 2070. Overclocking using MSI Afterburner went really well. The card accepted plus 93 for the core and plus 800 for the memory, with both the power and temp sliders maxed out. This resulted in a typical operating frequency of 2055 MHz for the core and 1970 MHz for the memory, though Afterburner reports the DDR speed as 7881 MHz. The GPU temperature maxed out at just 59 degrees, which was actually 3 degrees lower than what we saw out of the box, though the fans were spinning much faster now to keep the card's temperatures under control, but it still wasn't overly noisy. Overall, a solid overclock, and this is the best result I've seen from an RTX 2060. And just lastly, wrapping up the testing, I have some quick power consumption numbers. This is total system consumption, and we're testing in the standard GPU test rig, which uses the Core i9, 900K, clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of DDR4 memory. I have to say these results are quite surprising. Despite operating at a higher frequency, the ASUS ROG Strix consumes slightly less power. ASUS has obviously fine-tuned the voltage range here to make their RTX 2060 extremely efficient. Okay, so the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 2060 OC Gaming has a bloody long name and it heavily violates my two word limit per product. But that heinous crime aside, it is pretty good. Actually, it's, it's really very good. It's the best RTX 2060 I've come across so far and it's possibly the best on the market. It's also very expensive at $400 US. It's a $50 premium over the base model selling at the MSRP. Now, if this were a GTX 1060, it'd be a hard pass if I'm honest. At that price range, $50 more is a 20% markup. But here it's only a 14% premium, and frankly, I feel like you are getting much more value. Sure, it's not 14% faster, but it is much cooler, it is quieter, and it gives you a better chance of hitting higher clock speeds when overclocking. Compared to the MSI RTX 2060 Gaming Z that I recently reviewed, you get 33% more metal with the ASUS Strix model, and that enables massive improvements in operating temperature. 
It's also just $10 more, so a measly 3% price hike for 33% more aluminium. I was concerned about the VRM and GDDR6 cooling, but the results there were stellar. Overall, the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 2060 OC, it really is a beast. The only drawback with this product is the price, but if your budget will allow for it, then I do highly recommend you get it. Uh, can't imagine you will be disappointed. It really is a fantastic card. That cooler, yeah, like I said, it's a beast. And you've seen the thermals and all the results, so I probably don't need to go on about it too much more. Uh, yeah, it is a pretty awesome RTX 2060. I'm very, very impressed with it. And I think that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like button. Very much appreciated. Subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the work we're doing at Horrorbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You will gain access to our Discord chat, monthly live streams, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.